SpaceX is dominating the global space industry, but Europe hopes that a new rocket will change that. However, this dream may be difficult to achieve, and it could even get worse as billions of dollars in Europe's rocket business continue to fall into the hands of SpaceX. Why is that? Well, let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Thanks for joining us. So in recent years, Europe has largely relied on SpaceX to launch their satellites into space. In 2023, EU officials reached a $195 million agreement for SpaceX to launch four highly sensitive Galileo global positioning satellites. More recently, the Ariane 6 suffered a major blow when Europe's weather satellite operator, Eumistat, announced that it'll be using SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket to launch its next-gen weather satellite rather than using the Ariane 6 as they originally planned. That decision stunned European officials, with French space agency head Felipe Baptiste calling it a quite brutal change and criticizing Eumistat for not buying European. Italy and Spain, too, have turned to SpaceX to launch military satellites, which would likely have been handled by air and space if European rockets were available. You don't want to depend on anybody, and that's why all the nations that are spacefaring nations want their own access to space. Lucia Linares, director of space transportation and a launch strategy at the agency European Cosmos, said, Joseph Oshbacher, ESA's director general, lamented the situation in a series of statements last year. Last May, he wrote that Europe found itself in an acute launcher crisis with an albeit temporary gap in its own access to space and no real launcher vision beyond 2030. But from this perspective of European investors, they had no other choice because SpaceX was the most suitable partner for them at this time. To quickly end this situation and pull Europe's space industry out of the fate of having no access to space, the European Space Agency, along with Ariane Space, accelerated the long-delayed Ariane 6 rocket to its first launch July 9th. Although there were some issues during the ignition process, the launch eventually proceeded successfully. However, this does not mean that the European launch markets returned to the space race with the major powers of the world. Even though nearly 6 billion euros in subsidies have been pumped into the Ariane 6 program, there is little chance of it defeating SpaceX. Ariane Space, the firm behind this rocket, says it will offer prices that are competitive with SpaceX's current lineup. But unlike SpaceX's Falcon, Ariane 6 is not reusable. ESA executive Tony Tolker Nielsen said there are not enough engine launches planned to justify building a multi-use rocket. That decision attracted criticism from Elon. They need to go all in on reusability or be utterly uncompetitive, he wrote in a post on X last year. Rockets are no different from other transport technologies, he said, adding, no one's going to buy a single-use airplane. Expensive, delayed, and no longer cutting-edge tech. That description applies to Ariane 6, but also to swaths of Europe's economy, with companies giving ground on solar panels, battery cells, EVs, wind turbines, and microchips to Asian and American rivals. And that's shown by the onset of American-style tech giants. Because we hadn't developed a new launcher in decades, we lost some expertise, said Felipe Baptiste, the president of France's space agency, CNES. That's the same in many industrial fields across Europe. After all, Europe doesn't want to have to spend money on Elon SpaceX, so their best solution is to put European satellites into orbit, but at a high cost. So, whatever happened to Europe's space program? Four months after ESA signed the contract to develop Ariane 6, SpaceX landed its first Falcon 9 booster, initiating a cycle of recovery and reuse of rockets that proven crucial in making Falcon 9 a leader in the launch market. Ariane 6 is one of the few new larger media and rockets that does not have reusability in its roadmap, raising questions about Europe's competitiveness in commercial launch contracts. But European governments are eager for independent access to space, and Ariane 6 is poised to provide that. At one point, ESA and Ariane Space, the operator of the Ariane rocket family on a commercial basis, planned for a crossover flight between Ariane 5 and Ariane 6 that was scheduled to start in 2020. Instead, delays with Ariane 6 rocket left Europe without the capability to launch their own payloads into orbit for a year. Best case scenario, assuming the test flight on Tuesday goes well, the first operational launch of Ariane 6 is scheduled for December. So the new rocket won't start clearing the backlog of European sats waiting to fly on it for quite some time. But the situation's even worse. Europe's light rocket, Vega C, failed on its second flight in 2022, necessitating a redesign of the rocket's second stage, which is grounded vacancy till the end of the year. The four-year delay of the Ariane 6 rocket with the suspension of the Vega C rocket happened simultaneously with Europe losing access to Russian rockets. 
Russia's Soyuz medium lift rocket launched 27 times from the Guyana Space Center until officials abandoned the program following the invasion of Ukraine back in 2022. Had that not happened, Soyuz rockets launching from Europe's space port in French Guyana might have been available as a backup option for some Ariane and Vega payloads. Ideally, Europe officials want the Ariane 6 rocket to be competitive in the commercial launch industry, as its predecessor, the Ariane 5, was in the 2000s and 2010s. But Ariane 6 is emerging in a completely different market compared to Ariane 5 in its heyday, with SpaceX's dominant and a slew of other rockets like ULA's Vulcan, New Glenn from Blue Origin, and Japan. Hands H3 plus new challengers like Rocket Lab, Relativity Space, and Firefly Aerospace. All of these rockets, except for Ariane 6 and H3, are designed with reusability in mind. One could argue that Europe began work on the Ariane 6 at the worst possible time when rocket reusability was still a novel idea and had not been proven by SpaceX. ESA and the Ariane group locked themselves into developing Ariane 6 just before the tide turned towards reusable rockets. ULA's Vulcan launched earlier this year. You got Rocket Lab's Neutron, Relativity's Tehran R, and Firefly's Medium Launch Vehicle. They all started development after Ariane 6. However, perhaps it's fair to probe Europe's fundamental ambitions in the rocket field. Elon, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, he built it and they set the strategy with Falcon 9. SpaceX bought into the idea that lower launch costs achievable by reusing rocket hardware would increase the number of customers who could afford launch services. While most of SpaceX's record number of missions, more than 120 launches over the last year, carried the company's own Starlink Internet satellites, SpaceX is also conducting more missions for outside customers than ever before. With its new giant starship, SpaceX threatens to disrupt the launch industry yet again. After all, Ariane 6 is not going to be competing to launch many of the payloads that could fly on Starship, like Starlink satellites or crewed and cargo missions to the Moon or Mars. Not only in the rocket market, but European suppliers have also lost out to SpaceX in the satellite sector, even relying on SpaceX's assistance. To compete with SpaceX's Starlink, Europe decided to build a satellite recovery, connectivity, and security infrastructure on the IRIS-2 project. IRIS-2 was first announced in November 2022, with the goal of getting a Starlink competitor up and running by 2027. EU invited bids from local companies to do the work and offered 2.4 billion euros of financing to jumpstart the project that was estimated to cost about 6 billion euros to finalize. A consortium of nearly a dozen businesses ranging from companies Utelsat and Airbus to telecom providers Deutsche Telekom and Orange quickly formed to bid on the contract. The problem was that they bid as a group, meaning that there was no competition among bidders that might work to cut down the cost. 18 months later, that's still the case. In March, the EU European Commission delayed its award of IRIS-2. The Commission did not give a reason or say when it wants to delay the award, but late last month, Germany's Handelsblatt newspaper reported that the cost estimates for what it calls Europe's Starlink alternative project had ballooned to 12 billion euros. That's 100% over budget. You got to figure that the lack of competition, along with a tight deadline for getting the Constellation built and up in the air, had something to do with it, creating a perfect seller's market for this single albeit Hydra-headed bidder. For this reason, Iris 2 is still incomplete and may get put up for rebid, maybe to attract more bidders and hopefully a better price. Given the current situation, even when Europe's satellite project gets completed, it's going to struggle to catch up with SpaceX's Starlink. The harsh reality is that the European Union has found another solution, relying on the help of SpaceX. The EU hopes to use Ariane's new Ariane 6 rocket to launch its new Iris-2 satellites, which have not yet been built. Caveats aside, Ariane 6 has got another problem. The hopes of building the rocket for half the cost of Ariane's older Ariane 5 model have proven over-optimistic. In the last report, each single Ariane 6 launch was estimated to cost about $115 million. By comparison, SpaceX's Falcon 9 launches are advertised at barely half that price, just $67 million. Iris 2 said to require about 170 satellites to function. It's unknown how large these will be or how many the Ariane 6 can carry up at a time. Given that, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has a payload capacity roughly equal to that of Ariane 6, so it seems unlikely that switching launch providers alone from Ariane to SpaceX could cut the EU launch costs in half.
Granted, launch costs are only part of the equation. There's also the cost of building the Iris 2 satellites to consider. But here again, SpaceX builds satellites as well as rockets now, both Starlink satellites and military-grade Star Shield satellites. Whether SpaceX's satellite prices are as cheap as its rockets isn't known, but if they are, then theoretically, at least it seems likely SpaceX could both build and launch Europe's Hope 4 Starlink alternative cheaper than its European rivals could. It might even be able to build an alternative to Starlink for the original target price of 6 billion euros, then hand over the entire project to Europe turnkey style. Abracadabra, Europe would have its Starlink alternative built by the same company that built Starlink Classic. The real alternative to SpaceX, it turns out, would be a satellite communication system that costs more than it should and arrives years behind schedule. When it comes to doing a business in space, SpaceX remains the low-cost leader. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.